So, hello everyone. Uh, could you please send in chat if you can hear me? And mean that we can start. Cool, thanks. So yeah, uh, my name is Dennis and I'm working as a software test automation engineer on Evolution Gaming. And uh, today, um, actually we were waiting for uh, this webinar for a long time, but unfortunately we were uh, we were postponed it due to world known situation now with uh, all the pandemic. Yeah, and uh, we decided to have this webinar as webinar actually not as open event in Riga. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a good chance that even more people uh, will join us. And yeah, today I, I would like you to um, to show something and actually to tell something interesting about computer vision and how it is possible to use the computer vision um, in automation testing, but not only for screenshot comparison, but also in scope of functional tests. Um, so I, I'm not gonna show you a lot of example of the code, etc. but actually I would like to uh, show and tell, explain how, uh, like what is the most important ways of thinking when you're going to work with computer vision. Um, yeah, actually let's start and it's just a small video. <laughs> yeah, I will make, uh, we'll speed up it a little bit, two times. So this is a small video, you know, that probably the topic of um, self-driving cars is really popular nowadays. And actually now one day I decided to do something I like this by myself because it was interesting for me to know how actually um, the company who develops uh, the games like Need for Speed or uh, and other racing games, how do they test it? And uh, actually, as uh, as far as I know, uh, most of the games are been tested manually, right? Because of um, like if you want to do it automatically, it is kind of impossible to automate all this process due to known reason, the difficulties and the complexity of the testing. Uh, so in this example, uh, you just show this without machine learning, it's just pure computer vision algorithm uh, that was developed in Python. Also um, using Python GUI, manipulate with a keyboard, uh, pressing the button for accelerate, turning left, right, brake, etc. And actually in one day you can develop algorithm like this that will be driving the car and recognizing the lanes, actually recognizing the road. So as you can see, it's not difficult. It's my, the main point that I wanted to tell you. So let's start a little bit from the theory. Why is a computer vision and where it take its uh, beginning? So uh, this is the, our brain. And actually we have like three is the most important parts that are responsible for our vision. And actually uh, what you can see here on the screen is V1, that is the color yellow. This is visual cortex number one. And exactly this visual cortex number one is the most important part and why we can see and why we can recognize the objects. Um, in all this brain structure, it is also was, was observed, observed by scientists uh, the group of cells that are responsible, they are known and they are called as the M and P pathways. So it's a magnocellular and parvocellular. Uh, those, the group of cells, each of them are responsible for their own uh, way of processing the information that entering our eyes. Uh, and this magnocellular, that is M pathway, is detecting the aspects of movement, such as location, speed, direction, and moving objects. And the P pathway, it is actually this pathway that is responsible for uh, actually visual equity and for detail of analysis of shape, size, and color. Also, this group of cellular is responsible for recognition, recognizing if the objects that we can see, it is vertical objects or horizontal objects. And um, it's kind of 
uh, there were uh, different experiments by scientists, probably you read it in some um, articles, that uh, some scientists were made uh, different, um, like, they were trying to understand actually how um, the animals are actually alive, uh, living uh, creatures uh, will react if they will grow only in the room, let's say in the area with the horizontal or with uh, vertical objects. Yeah. So um, it is interesting because of we can train uh, those our parts of brain and it means that we will not be able actually to uh, recognize uh, horizontal if our brain was not trained for recognizing of horizontal lines of horizontal objects yeah it's just some small information now let's get back to uh, open CV as itself so open CV CV it means computer vision and in automation testing, actually, in computer vision, it's not only about testing, but in general, if you're working with computer vision, it's most important is understanding the goal. Uh, the thing is that many people who start working with a computer vision, they start thinking in which tools to use. It is probably using OpenCV with Python, or maybe start with SQL because it's some, somehow easier, maybe try to use another frameworks uh, that allows to detect objects, etc. But actually this understanding of the goal will allow you to build the framework robust and fast. So let's imagine that we have example like this. And usually if you will browse in the internet, the articles about computer vision, how to detect uh, something somewhere, it will show you example like this. So let's imagine that uh, you have four objects and these four objects are located on the black screen. So this example is probably the easiest example that can be presented because if you'll be using any instruments from computer vision, it is possible to, to, to recognize these objects. Yeah. And uh, after recognition, the objects actually, they will be, they look like this. It is possible to recognize using uh, different filters or contours. I, I will give you all the examples after this slides with images and there will be one, one slide with the functions and uh, methods, uh, how, how it was done. But now let's imagine that we are playing the game. Let's say this is some RPG game and where the character is walking between the rooms and in one of the rooms we have uh, the mission where we should choose a book on the table. It's actually the scenario that can be found in every game, um, even some shooter, whatever, when you want to pick up some weapon from the floor. Yeah. So again, example like this with um, four books. Yeah. So uh, here we have actually three books and one label. The first approach that we can do is using the feature matching. So in this example, you can see the feature matching. Um, a bit later, I will give an, you an example of, and actually more description what, how does it work, this feature matching. But on this slide, I want to assure you that it, it will be really difficult using feature matching to match all of this, uh, the rest of these books, this orange one, and brown, and especially this label. First of all, because of, um, as a perspective, how we look on the table, yeah? Uh, and why it was possible to match the green book? Because this is green, this green book, um, it's the, mostly, the most different uh, object on the screen by color. So uh, if you want to, uh, to interact with the objects that are really unique on, on, on the ground, yeah, on, on your scene, then you can use feature matching. But it's not our case, because in this example, I want to show you how not to use feature matching, but more advanced and uh, how to differentiate all of the objects on the screen. So if you will apply one of the most common instruments that probably you will find in the internet, if you will start uh, browsing for this topic of uh, computer vision and Python, Java, whatever, 
uh, probably the first example you will see. Yes, sorry, I want to get back to the previous slide. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, it will. Uh, so in this example, you'll find that it is good to use some sort of algorithm for edge detection. Um, it's called it as Kenny edge detection algorithm. But if you apply this algorithm directly to your scene, to your image it will not give you the results that you're expecting for. Because of as the results, you will get something like this. And as you can see on the screen, all of the lines are, are located, but we are connected between each other. It means that we cannot, still we cannot differentiate all of these uh, books um, as this label. And if we will be using another techniques from computer vision, after this uh, image we have. It's probably it will give us as one big area where everything is connected. But if you know actually how to combine another techniques, um, like using the erosion or dilation, um, using another algorithms of uh, detection the edges, in this case, you will get the results like this, that actually ideally match the location of each object on this table. Uh, why I cannot present you the precise example? Because for every project, for every scene, perhaps you will need to write your own, your unique algorithm. Probably, of course, some parts of this algorithm can be uh, extracted as a common methods, but usually for different things, depending on the colors, on the locations, on the amount of the objects, you need to write your own algorithms. Um, they mostly, most of the algorithms that, and actually OpenCV of itself, it's not so big framework. Actually, who is familiar with OpenCV? Probably this, this person knows that uh, the framework of itself is not so big and usually you're manipulating only by up to 10 different methods and approaches and using all these methods and approaches you can get uh, your result. So now let's make our task a little bit more complicated because in the previous example, we had a black table and the black table on this um, black ground and actually our co colorful books and colorful label. But what if we have the table like this that is actually have this wooden color and we have some label here yeah, and actually we have put the first book on this table, the second one, and the third one. So you're playing the game, actually you're testing the game, yeah, because you're a testing engineer. And your goal is to find the book and differentiate them by shape, by color, by tint, uh, the book that has some label on top, and actually differentiate where is the book and where is not the book. Yeah. Again, now I will, I will, I will go slide by slide and show that actually it is uh, possible to do. Uh, so the first approach is to use the algorithms directly, will not give you the results that probably you are expecting for. But if you are using these algorithms wisely, uh, in this case, you will get actually the results as something like this. It actually precisely uh, show you the location of each book and the central label. Uh, if you have the shapes like this, it's totally enough to process them further because from the shape, you can easily uh, differentiate them by type of shape, for example, you can see which type of shapes will be as a rectangle or um, and the central shape will be some ellipse. Yeah. Well, now we have the shapes, uh, each shape on this table. This procedure, actually this operation of extracting the shapes from, um, from the initial background, initial image, actually it takes some milliseconds. 
uh, you, you will not even recognize in your uh, on your computer like if you want to measure time of processing your image probably you won't recognize even the millisecond that it will because the processing is really fast of course if you are not um, implementing like loops in loops whatever well as i just uh, told on the previous slide um, all of these uh, examples and text is auto generated from the code that uh, i developed before this presentation and based on uh, type of the shape type of the figure it was possible to detect which of where is the book and where is not the book uh, this central label is kind of tricky because this is the round label yeah and with the shape inside now imagine that you are using uh, machine learning it's most probably that machine learning that was trained somehow for different images of the books it will recognize the central part as the book also yeah but with computer vision it is possible to avoid such misleading and to find only the objects that you that you want to find uh, the next one the next one if we want somehow to recognize our uh, objects by color so it is also possible to do with OpenCV because in the OpenCV every um, actually our each object of, uh, of our piece of the screen or if we are reading uh, the image from scratch it is uh, it is like three-dimensional matrix uh, with um, three ranges of the color, which is uh, uh, bl blue, green, and green and red. So it's actually it's very important to remember that in OpenCV, uh, initially when you're reading the image, it's not RGB but it is BGR. So bl uh, blue, green, and red. Calculating the amount of in each range, you can identify which color like the general color belongs to which book so let's say if in our game we would like to um to select the book the green one again it is possible to do with computer vision as you can see so go to the next slide um, on the previous slide you saw that it was detected as a two red book of course because of brown brown color is like it's more like a dark red color so it was detected as a red one also this orange red uh, also detected as a red color but what if you want to differentiate them between light and dark yeah again it is possible to do by calculating because of each range of the color it is in the range between zero and two five five that actually um zero it means it's dark two five five it's a light or white color and uh, this is an example also how you can differentiate between light and dark by the way uh, guys if you uh, yeah just i uh, wanted it to remind if you want to ask some question in the chat uh, being sure that you are sending this question or personally to me or uh, for all attendees yeah thanks uh yeah i see that we have the first question i'll just take a look <sighs> okay i think that most of the question i'll be answer uh, in the end um thank you for the question so go to the next slide Let's imagine that we have another uh, another test case is to detect uh, the object, the book with a title. And here we cannot use only computer vision. Like on some level we can, but it will be really difficult. So and we need to take as a help is optical character recognition. And it is the most uh, the most known framework open source framework for optical character recognition. It is called Tesseract. And now it's version four. 
probably you heard about this test direct. And sometimes ago it was really slow because uh, it was working like based on C++ libraries. But starting from the version four, Tesseract four, it is already working based on the neural networks. And the speed of Tesseract is extremely uh, fast. It can recognize, detect any label in uh, probably half of a second or even faster. Like it depends on, on, on the image scale. Yeah and amount of the text, etc. Well, we have four objects that were detected using computer vision. And we can send each of this object, the shape, to Tesseract and uh, read this uh, picture and actually detect if some text was recognized or not. And actually, this is example that was returned from Tesseract. And Tesseract returned answer that yes, this is with title book. Again, this image on the ground that you can see it is auto-generated and the algorithm was something like for each shape that was detected on the screen, uh, execute the process of optical character recognition. Let's go next. On all of these slides, you can see now that it is possible to differentiate these two like uh, actually not two, but four, four books, it's just typo, by color, by tint and location. Uh, why location wasn't mentioned in the previous slide? Because it's obvious that if you have the location of each shape, you know that uh, where is the very, very left and where is the very right uh, book and you can just sort it by X, uh, X and Y coordinates, etc. So by angle, also it wasn't mentioned here, but in, with computer vision, when you're detecting the objects, when you have the shape, it is possible to calculate also the angle of your object. And for example, if one of the test cases would be to get the, the book that um, let's say rotated to the angle 45 degrees, it is possible to do. By size, again, it is possible because you can sort uh, each shape, uh, like you can sort it by height, by width, or by perimeter, etc. Uh, also, by shape, it means a rectangle, triangle, uh, circle, and so on. And by text, is another example that I just told you using optical character recognition. So, this is uh, different approaches how you can uh, that you can apply for functional testing of your games and actually not only games. And this example, I will show you a bit later. Why not, why is it applicable also uh, as, uh, as well for mobile testing and web testing. Um, so all of these uh, parts as I described here, yeah, it is uh, in our brain, <laughs> it is processed by this M cellular, uh, M pathways in our visual one cortex, um, previous one, yeah. So the main approach in computer vision, how everything was done, it looks probably a little bit difficult because um, like, of course, computer vision is topic of itself is difficult. It looked like difficult, but in reality it is not because usually you're manipulating only by this six, like, I was using for all this presentation and detecting of, of the books, I was using only this six uh, methods. Of course, threshold that I specified in this second sentence. So analyzing of contours, the shapes, and of course, after binarization is a threshold. What does it mean that this threshold uh, function is when you take your image and uh, you convert it into grayscale, so it means that your image has only one layer instead of three layers. It's a gray, gray layer. And um, your pixels are you, like you have only pixels between uh, zero that is uh, absolutely black and white that is absolutely white. Uh, 255 that is absolutely white. And this method of threshold allows you to split your image kind of if you want to filter out all of the colors and convert them to black that are under some range. Let's say if you are applying the threshold to the image um, threshold with parameter 200, it means that it will return you back 
binarized image, it means that all the pixels that were under 200, they will become black. And all the pixels that were, that were over 200, they will become white. Of course, there are different, um, also uh, different parameters that you can invert uh, these pixels, etc. like under 200 is possible to get white and over 200 possible to get black. But the main point, you understand what, what does it mean, this threshold. Uh, also, there is adaptive threshold, but adaptive threshold is, uh, is using actually already uh, internal algorithm and it's kind of uh, what this adaptive threshold does. It's based on analyzing of the whole your image. It takes um, kind of, it applies the threshold that um, the best fits to your image to binarize it. But adaptive threshold, um, well, it's not so popular because it just, from my experience, it's not so popular. And I never heard that someone, uh, someone um, kind of recommend to use it. What does it mean all these methods I wrote? So the first method I wrote, let's say you, you found your shape, you know, binarized image, and you have different white shapes on a black uh, background and a black scene. But also you have a lot of shapes, like little shapes as a noise, like the shapes with an area of five pixels, like two to two pixels or 10 to 10 pixels. And, or some of your big shapes are connected. Let's say you have two shapes, yeah? And they are connected in here and you want to disconnect them. In this case, you can apply uh, this function erode. Uh, this function erode, you can specify uh, the parameter with, um, uh, you can specify here the kernel, the size of the kernel and um, the amount of, uh, like how much time to, to repeat this erosion. And well, this uh, function erode, it will go through the perimeter of your shape and will kind of eating uh, the borders of your shape. And in this case, it will allow you that at some point, it will disconnect our two shape like this. Like it will become a little smaller and disconnected between each other. What we have delayed? Delayed is actually opposite to erode. Let's say we have two shapes disconnected. For some reason, let's say um, we have the image and uh, like we want to recognize the car. Yeah, the white car. And after recognition of this car, we realized that on the top of this car, it was a shadow from the tree. And this shadow of the tree kind of split the, our car to left and right, but we know that it should be the only one object. So delayed will help us to join two objects together, like to grow the pixels around. Actually get structuring element is another um, function that will allow you to manipulate with your pixels. It has a lot of different parameters. And uh, it's, again, if you want to play with the pixels, growing pixels or make uh, less pixels, etc. cetera. Can the edge detection? Um, this function is, is really an important function to know because of this function allows you, a function, but approach, algorithm, whatever, uh, you can use to detect the edges. So uh, let's imagine that uh, you have, like, it's, you can find Wikipedia, uh, why canny and how, how does it work? But um, in general, what, what it does is kind of transform the image in such a way that um, all, of, all of this part of our images with the biggest contrast between two pixels are recognized as the edges. So this is uh, the way how to recognize edges. Then half lines and half circles. It's a two and other uh, ways. If you want to recognize, detect only lines or only circles. And later I will show you on a good example how we were using and are using actually half circles uh, for testing of our games. And by the way, this half lines algorithm, it was using for uh, this example with a self-driving car that I showed you on the beginning. Uh, it was actually analyzing these half lines um, that we detected the exact 
lines left and right lane, but uh, not something else. Well, yeah, it is important to know uh, this slide that we have only six approaches, methods, or functions, and in computer vision, usually you can only transform into contours, getting shapes after binarization of your image and just start uh, manipulating with your image however you want. Also, it is really easy to uh, save your image in JPG format um, and actually debugging it. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Feature matching. The promise on, on the beginning, uh, the feature matching, uh, to tell you a little bit about this, it was this slide, yeah. Well, there are different algorithms for feature matching and it's called as a surf or CURF, or B, brisk, sift, case, a case, and also, uh, yeah, let's start from this. Um, we have all this algorithm for feature matching. They are a little bit different, differentiated between each other. For example, uh, uh, starting from the version OpenCV uh, version three, um, all the only surf and ORB algorithms uh, still. Uh, you, you can find it in a free version of OpenCV, but starting from version three, OpenCV is not free license and like you need to buy it, whatever. But uh, actually most of the examples in the internet and most of the projects, they are still using OpenCV um, version two and it's absolutely fine because uh, OpenCV with version four is if you want to more connect your OpenCV with machine learning but if not, it's absolutely fine using version two. Uh, what are the difference between all of this algorithm, Surfold, B, Brisk, Sift, Case, Case? It's only, it's actually how precise um, you can find uh, the piece of image on your scene. How does it work? This feature matching, I, I, I always uh, say that it is the same as a regular expression in strings. So the same feature matching in the images. Um, like you, you need to put uh, the bunch of different parameters, how precise, how deep look into the image. And also there exist two additional, back, two additional um, algorithms that is called FLAN at brute, brute force. Um, it's actually additional algorithms that you can uh, implement while you're using the feature matching algorithm, sort will be case to case, etc. They, they uh, uh, FL, uh, A, and N, and brute force allows you better um, to evaluate uh, the near neighbor's pixels. That's actually how does it called? And then it's uh, FLA, I don't remember already, but and then it's uh, near neighbors. Uh, the differences will be in the speed of, of execution, in um, um, actually in accuracy, and it depends on your game and depends on your task. You need to select it by yourself because of uh, let's say you have the game or you have the project where you need to recognize only the big objects, and uh, these big objects are. Um, Kind of, it, it will be all, always the big piece of screen on another on your scene, your on your main uh, image, on your main scene. In this case, to be honest, it doesn't matter which one to use. But if you have the small objects, or if most of your uh, games have the same colors, and you need to recognize some little piece of uh, something that uh, have the same colors as the rest of the image, you need just to try different algorithms and even in automating testing of our games, uh, I, was, I was going through all of this algorithm and uh, I stopped with SIFT and now we are using for our games, it's a SIFT algorithm. Yeah, and uh, using uh, near neighbors algorithm additionally to SIFT. Um, yeah, all of these algorithms are uh, available also with Java, OpenCV with version two, with Python, OpenCV version two or C++. And yeah, 
you can do something like this. Now uh, let's go to the image comparison because this is probably a topic that uh, most of you are familiar with. Um, and usually when people start talking about computer vision, most of the people thinking that they're talking about image comparison. It's even from my experience. And let's take a look on uh, these two images here. And what you can see, like there are differences but it is almost impossible to recognize the differences using our eyes here, right? Yeah, just take a look. Um, of course, if you'll start like looking for a couple of minutes, probably five minutes, whatever, uh, you will find the differences. By the way, if, if you see the differences, just write in the chat, it would be interesting to see that you found some differences and exactly where. Uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just reading because I don't want to tell where are the differences here, but in the end, yeah, you will see how much of them. It's two the same images with the same resolutions. Yeah, so uh, guys answered correctly that uh, the differences here on the number 29 also um, actually differences between the root will, but also just take a look here. All of these uh, objects are randomly generated and put on the table, absolutely all of them. And if we have the test case that need to validate that all of these objects are always uh, randomly placed on the table, well, it will be difficult for many of QAs to do it. But if you are using computer vision, the results will be something like, yeah, now and now uh, let's go slide by slide and I will show you. So this is the first one. Now we put on top the second one. You see how it was changed smoothly. Go back again. This is the first one slide, the second one, and now is the difference. So this is the objects of the differences. And actually this approach of comparing the differences is uh, the one of the approaches that we are using in uh, our framework, especially if we have for the games a different design. And uh, let's say developers are doing different design for the games and want to make sure that nothing is broken. Let's say uh, they're doing some fix, like internal fix and want to make sure that their design is not broken. So we have an algorithms and the test that can take the image from a pre-production let's say environment or like environment with not changed design. And it takes the screen from our develop development branch and compare it. And also depend on the ratio of al uh, allowed um, differences between two images, we can evaluate if there are differences on the screen or not. But now let's talk uh, when we cannot use such approach. So this is the image number one, and this is the image number two. I added this green uh, green circle here on the purpose, just to show you that uh, I, I, I switching uh, the slides. It's the first one and the second one. They're absolutely the same, they're identical. Or if you see the differences, just type in, in the chat, if you, if you don't trust me. Well, yeah, I will give you some seconds to find if there are some differences. It is the second one, and actually the first one is the same. Well, it's identical, two identical image. But let's assume that uh, at some point, and we don't know where exactly, our image can be processed somehow. Let's say we have some CDN or we have something else that can minimize our image or reduce the amount of pixels, whatever. It's like the service is tinify, tiny JPG, tiny PNG, you know, probably, especially developers are using all the services for, uh, for uh, compressing their assets. So this is the first one, this is the second one. And now if you're comparing, well, 
Yeah, it's a huge difference between two absolutely identical images. Again, it's very good because of if manual QA need to find somehow that the image was really processed by this uh, compressor service and the image was really compressed, then manually check it well, com comparing, um, probably comparing the actual size of, of the file in kilobytes, uh, but there are no other ways to do it because the images are really identical. But if you are doing it using computer vision, you'll clearly see that yes, image was processed. Um, just a second, I want to see maybe is this question related to slide. To use some idea, maybe having OpenCV to use blur filters. Um, I didn't get the question actually. Yeah, actually the blur is a one of the function again in, in computer CV, uh, in open CV, sorry, if, if you want to smooth your image or to make uh, the image sharper, it is possible to use a sharp kernel, a kernel or, or blur kernel, but it depends on, on your needs. Uh, yeah, let's go to the next slide from this one. So it says like, when is a bad idea to use image comparison? It's when the images could have different resolution. Um, like let's say on, on, on some step, your image will be reduced from uh, the size 80, 800 pixels over uh, 2000 pixels to 400 over uh, 1000 pixels. And in this case, OpenCV will just throw an exception that is impossible to compare to images because they're really different because of the height and the width perimeter are different here. Um, yeah, again, a suggestion to blur two images and compare to omit those images. Could it be, could make it better? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it make it better. Of course, if we'll take, let, let me get back to the previous slide. So if we'll blur those two images and apply um, like, and then compare it, probably, not probably, but of course we will have less uh, objects here. But of course that we will lose also on the general overview of our image, right? So in this case, it means that, uh, let's say after image, image compression, um, our number one here becomes absolutely invisible or really like badly visible, whatever. It means that blur is not always applicable for like, it's good to use it, but it's not always applicable in uh, real life scenarios because it might cause letting bugs go to production. <laughs> but in general, it is possible to do, yeah. And when the images are processed by the image optimizer tools, image compressor, it is also a better idea to use the image comparison. Um, let's go to the next. And use all techniques. So on the next slide, I'm gonna show you how we are doing actually this example of um, the game. And there are no HTML elements. So here I want to stop and here you can see this colorful shape on the left part yeah and this colorful part it's another it's optical flow is in computer vision that allows you even to detect the direction in which your object is moving so it's really it's, it's really nice approach if you want to analyze a dynamical moving parts of your screens and make sure uh, that those parts of your screens uh, of your screen is really moving uh, yeah, I'll start the video again from the beginning. So now it's, it's something like this. It's one of the test cases that we have that we are checking, of course, that um, the wheel is rotating. Um, pressed wrong button, sorry. So now let's go again to the next. So in here I have paused and you can see it's highlighting with a black um, 
with a dark like, shape overlay. Um, this object here that I'm moving around with a mouse cursor. And this is the way how we are recognizing, how we're detecting uh, those chips. Like we can use a feature matching, but as I told you before, that we have colorful screen and colorful objects around. And if we will be using feature matching, we will have a lot of uh, false positive results and it will be, it will be fine chips here or somewhere else. So uh, the approach we are using, we are detecting the whole area with all of the chips. Yeah. And uh, then based on, on this data, uh, actually we can sort out all, all of our chips and click on the chips that, that we need. Uh, let's go to the next one. So we placed. And now it's important for me to click pause on a good moment. Yeah, I clicked probably a few milliseconds uh, later, but anyway, I think that you understand uh, this example. So actually it was really a difficult way how to detect actually this, uh, the ball has been dropped into the pocket and how to know that, how to know actually this, this moment, this event happened. Because uh, like if there are no any events on the ground, or cetera, like we cannot rely. We, we need to test it as a user, do it right? Because it's, uh, it's kind of um, acceptance testing and cannot rely on an, another event or some background. Um, yeah, so uh, we have another set of algorithms uh, that uh, makes like uh, the seri series of screenshots one by one and detecting actually when uh, when uh, the whole view of the wheel looked like something that we are expecting for. Uh, I cannot explain everything now because it's really difficult. It's like the whole uh, class that describes how it behaves but in general, like we are awaiting for the correct screenshot at some moment. And here we're using the techniques of half circles that I have mentioned before on one of the slides before, it's a half circles. So these half circles can detect the circles. Like we have actually a several algorithms. One of the algorithms uh, is been using uh, these half circles and another algorithm works on, on, uh, on the brights. Uh, the bright uh, of, of the objects on the wheel. And actually this is the ways how you can detect such a small objects. Because believe me that it will be almost impossible to train your, um, like your neural network for detecting on this ball, or probably you will need uh, like the huge set of, of the images for train. And just in case if something will change, well, you to retrain your network again. So. For testing the cases like this, it is the only one way how to do it. And these tests perfectly work on desktop, on mobile, on native mobile, I mean, iPhone, uh, iPads, and uh, different Android devices. Right? It, it independent from the resolution, um, brightness of the screen, whatever. Yeah, let me continue the video. Actually, this is the end of the video, I would say, because it was the most important part. Yeah, and this is that. Uh, yeah, this is actually the way how it is possible to to get um, to to combine all of all of the techniques together. And now let me tell you a little bit about recognizing of the results because on the previous this video I presented you how how it is possible to detect the ball, but what the manual QAs are doing that they're not only detecting the ball, right? but they need also to uh, detect uh, actually where uh, if if this results if the number uh, next to the pocket is the correct one if the winning results are correct actually any games that you are playing you have some winning results and actually this is the most important well uh, here it was used a little bit of uh, trigonometry and mathematical of calculation the angle and rotating of uh, the location where the ball has been dropped. We can calculate um, 
like we, we know that this is our auto, uh, auto uh, gonally axis y and x yeah it is orthogonal to x here and um, like we can split our image to uh, quarters and we're detecting the location of our ball uh, like relatively to our axis y and x we are calculating the exact location of our ball and we know that actually uh, the whole this border is being rotated to the same angle and why we need to do this actually because if tesseract want to recognize something if you want to, to recognize something with tesseract you need to pre-process your image a little bit you you, you cannot just throw there um your t text that was uh, somehow rotated uh, upside down whatever that's why we need to rotate a little bit our image and put this number one, as you can see on this example here on the bottom, to the view like this. And actually using uh, the algorithm number six from Tesseract, uh, it is possible to recognize it. It is number one. Well, sounds really easy, but I played a little bit with impl implementing of, of this algorithm. And actually, it is not only for the games, because uh, probably most of you are people from uh, maybe some of, some of you working for games, but many of people working not for the games, but in other projects. So let's assume that, that you have a mobile application, just Android, iOS mobile application, doesn't matter, this is example from iOS mobile application. And you need to test on this mobile application that this ad, let me take a possibility drawing of the screen. Yeah, this ad pods are placed correctly. Like usually, we need to take. Uh, it's only possible to validate manually, right? How we can play the video and count our time on on some counter uh, on, on your watch, and uh, you, you you can identify if the if this ad has appeared in the proper time or not uh, but also it is possible to apply computer vision here and using the threshold as you can see those odd pots are the, the brightest uh, part of the screen and uh, it is possible of course detect using epium selenium um, the shape for the whole um, progress bar and then send this shape, this piece of image to OpenCV method, process it and get output and the output will be like, it will be like this. So we can detect only add pods and automatically, uh, like relatively to the beginning and the end of the progress bar, it is possible to calculate where is, where those add pods are located and relatively uh, if we know the uh, the length of this episode, that it is 43 minutes 29 seconds, uh, to calculate that those art pods are placed in the correct time range. Also, if you want to detect uh, our uh, part of our video without ads, it is possible to do. Let's say we want to make sure that um, the length of our video cannot be longer than uh, let's say 10 minutes without playing advertisement because it's important for business, you know. So again, using computer vision, you can do something like this. This is was another example from another application. So I think that I have to remove those my, this my painting that I did before. Yeah, it's good. So it's just another example of uh, the application where you can uh, watch a different video like Netflix, uh, whatever. And like probably who familiar with mobile testing, you know that uh, if your test your mobile application that has a long scroll down, especially on iPads or iPhones, uh, Epium works really slow. And let's say you have sections like this, you have 20 sections like this, and you have the carousels that you can scroll to the left, to the right. It's a huge amount of objects. And on the uh, Epium, on the iPads or on iOS in general, 
it hardly can process um, pages like this. And kind of finding the label of these comedies or dramas, it will take you probably 45 seconds or even more, or sometimes Epium will just crash it, etc. Et so you can do this like easily, of course. And again, using the computer vision, if you take the whole screenshot applying the threshold, and then after applying of this threshold, it is possible like what we can do the first. We can just apply our Tesseract optical character recognition for this whole screen. But the problem is that as the output, we will get some um, like a bunch of text joined together that will be not really informative for us, absolutely. And in our test, we want to know the precise location of uh, label and the carousels here, right? So using computer vision, we can uh, and delayed, right? It is possible to these dramas and comedies and actually all of these words join together into the shapes. By the way, uh, yeah, join together into the shapes like this. Yeah, it was used algorithm of uh, adoptive threshold in here. It was one of the examples where it was really useful, uh, adoptive threshold. So here you have already the sets of shapes. You can just iterate through each shape and let's say each shape that is located on the left part of your screen here. Yeah, if you can split the screenshot to the left and to the right on the left part of your screen and send it to Tesseract and Tesseract will return you back if this is uh, what is the text inside of, of the label, the comedies, dramas, and then how we can detect already the location of this label and actually in one second, it is possible to do everything in one second, all this operation. Uh, you can have the location for each label and then you can manipulate and do whatever you want else with your application. So you're saving like instead of 45 seconds looking for some for one label, you can do everything in one second. Uh, yeah, it's just an example uh, that I've been prefer uh, prepared before. So let's say we have the CV document like this, it was taken as an example. Uh, and I wanted to apply a similar al algorithm to uh, this document because we have a logo, we have different font, a big one, small one, um, the bold, light, whatever. Yeah, here is the algorithm written in Python. What it does, it split, it kind of divide our image to the different sections. Then it create uh, the queue of um, multi uh, of queue of threads, and it's sending to each thread to each of this section the word that is located into this section. It was used the same approach that, as I showed you before on the previous slide, where we transformed here, yeah, what we transformed word into the shapes. Yeah. So with Python, all this open, uh, all this uh, CV, this operation of processing, it takes, as you can see, 5.66 milliseconds, so five and a half seconds, I would say, to process uh, this whole picture. And next. So in here, we have the location of each label it just as example, as a, for presentation, that we can uh, highlight each label separately as it was found. Of course, that there are some labels like you see document created are found like together and updated or here together with zero two. But anyway, this algorithm was done like in three hours or, or something. So if you tune, if you play a little bit more with uh, such algorithm, it, can, it might work uh, much faster and much more accurate. And that's actually how Adobe work with, um, with uh, all these kind of algorithms um, for processing and recognition of, of the text. Maybe they have some more advanced uh, instruments. I'm sure they have, but on the beginning, um, like principally, they're using the same approach here. So you just demo how we found all of the words and this is the last one, what I did. 
Um, a little bit scroll back. So what I did uh, again using a, another framework for Python that uh, where you can create HTML or TXT document. Actually, in this example, I decided to to build like HTML document. I simply rebuilt all this CV into HTML document. It means that document that I can now just uh, highlight text, copy it and send, send it. So just super easy Adobe, um, I don't remember what is, how the product is this name, Adobe something for text recognition that all of us were using before. Yeah, it is possible to do um, by, by your own. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, this is the time for the questions. Uh, if someone of you would like not to write the questions, but to tell it, to speak it, uh, there is button, um, raise, raise a hand. So you can click this button and uh, yeah, I will just unmute you and you can start speaking. Or just write the question to the chat and uh, I will try to answer. And one also important thing, uh, I will I will put into the chat to all attendees this URL. So would be I will be really glad if you could answer. Um, it's just a little quiz. How do you like how what what you don't like and how would you like to see the next presentation? But yeah. Uh, I know that it was probably difficult, but this computer vision approach uh, from a previous experience and previous projects uh, that I was working on, if we had applications, it was especially for mobile applications. And when the locators were changing, especially when developers like to play with a style of locators and IDs in Ethereum, so like one, one week you have with prefix UIA, another day you, you don't have this prefix, another week. And all of the tests and scenarios that were uh, supported by OpenCV, they were really stable. This was probably the most stable part of all of the tests because they were completely independent from, uh, from locators. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just waiting if there are some questions. Probably which of the games you can use it. Yeah, what is the difficulties? Um, how long time you need to uh, to learn something about OpenCV. By the way, there are uh, really nice courses on uh, Udemy uh, for computer vision. And um, for like after a passing of the one course, uh, you will have enough knowledge to start uh, doing stuff like this. Um, yeah. Also, it's important to know that not everywhere uh, you can use a machine learning and computer vision because for machine learning, you need to have uh, enough data. <clears throat> so I can name just a second. I'm trying to open the section Q&A. Sorry that I'm not talking now, but uh, I'm not sure why after clicking on it, it doesn't open anything. I know maybe I need to start to stop sharing the screen. And in this case, I'll be able to open the Q&A section. So let me try to do it. 
Um, so, yeah, how to start learning it and what would be the fast way to suggest to learn it. Um, as I told before, probably the fastest way is learn based on the practice. Um, um, like if you have real life experience and, um, sorry, example, where you need to use to, to use it, this is the best way how to learn it. And just uh, there is another good resource uh, in the internet. It's called Pi Image Search. Uh, let me type it into chat. Uh, yeah, it's Pi Image Search. Good call, I think. Something like this. Um, it is a really great resource. Um, and there are a lot of examples for computer vision, for machine learning and the stuff related to this. So uh, is machine learning and OpenCV only for Python? No, actually it's basically, it was developed with C++. Um, yeah, but um, like why everyone is using it with Python because Python itself is a fast, um, it's super fast language. Um, comparison with let's say Java or C Sharp. Uh, also Python is used for machine learning um, projects, for data analytics projects and uh, all this AI field as a computer vision is a part of AI. That's why uh, the Python is, is considered as uh, probably the best way to start learning computer vision. And uh, again, why we decided to go with Python uh, we, in our automation, because uh, it, it's more about we need to combine and Selenium and computer vision. And of course, it, it will be difficult to support your, your tests using C++ and uh, OpenCV. I'm not sure even there exists Selenium for C++. So uh, that's why the Python and OpenCV is probably the best combination. So how much time you need to spend on creating computer vision based test case compared to web driver one? Actually it's not, uh, if, um, well, if you have some specific test case, uh, if you have some specific test case uh, where you need like to cover the whole page from scratch, but you have its framework already, it's just a matter of how, how would you like to do it? Let's say, if you will be manipulating with the shapes, it's it's easy because you have the only one algorithm that allow you to detect all of the shapes on the screen and uh, manipulate with them. If you want to detect the specific image, you can use feature matching. In this case, you can just you, you need just uh, take the piece of, of the image, save it in your folder, the same as you as you are doing it with uh, your locators. Um, yeah, so your images will be as your locators. Um, but in comparison, what is faster and what is slower, it just depends on experience, to be honest. I cannot say that now for me is uh, uh, faster um, than, uh, like, uh, I, I want to say that using computer vision now for me, it's probably the same as it's using WebDriver or Appium, even comparison with Appium, I would say that computer vision is faster because debugging with mobile, mobile native mobile applications is very slow. I think the test and some of the test is not difficult uh, at all. That's why I suggest try it. But um, it's probably not very fair comparison between WebDriver and OpenCV because with computer vision, you can test your page as it should be, like you can visually find the object. And, uh, but with WebDriver, you can just find like some abstract object that somehow is presented on the screen. Uh, but we don't know if, if this object actually visually looked fine. Or, so this is another benefit of user, using computer vision at some point in your application, especially for um, acceptance testing. Uh, so uh, the next question is about uh, sense here. Uh, is it possible to build CV testing with uh, JavaScript? Yes, uh, actually there is some library that where you can connect uh, OpenCV with JavaScript. Uh, you just need to type it in Google um, JS OpenCV. 
but I was trying it and actually I was beginning it with JavaScript and OpenCV, but unfortunately this library is not, it, like, it's quite new and a lot of functionality still is not implemented in this uh, JavaScript OpenCV library. It is mostly focused on um, such kind of features as a face recognition, like human recognition, that actually is, is not really important in for functional testing. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is possible, but it's not as good as with Python. And by the way, it's not so fast. It has also feature matching, but I remember that the speed between JavaScript feature matching, Swift algorithm and Python feature matching Swift algorithm with absolutely the same set of parameters, the speed was uh, approximately 10 times faster using Python than JavaScript. Yeah, if, if you want to find something really accurate, precise. Uh, so in the chat, link didn't appear for me. Hmm. I'll try to retype it again. It's called by image search. And I'll place here the link to the form again. It is in chat. Um, yeah, maybe just a couple of minutes more uh, before we're finishing and probably have more questions. But I would really recommend it's a quite new field, especially, um, especially in automation testing and engineering in general. So another question is, would you consider organizing workshop style of OpenCV license? Um, yeah, in the same, actually the same format uh, is as it was done here. Uh, why not? Why not? Yeah. I just wanted because you know that it depends on um, level of preparation of the engineers. And if we start like coding, uh, doing something in this ID, uh, so most of the people becomes boring and probably some people don't know the topic. Um, well, but organizing workshop, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. We'll, we'll think about it. Um, if Python is test 10 times faster than JavaScript, what about Java and is it possible use Scala? So I didn't have such, um, a chance to compare the exact algorithms with Python and with Java. So it will not fair for me to um, to say some numbers, you know, take some numbers from air. Um, yeah, but probably what we can, uh, what, what we can say about Java is that first of all, in Java, everything should be compiled, especially if you have some small scripts. Um, this is difficulties, but uh, in general, the API and the methods and the parameters all the same. So if you if you know uh, OpenCV with Java, or with Python, or with C plus plus, you'll be easily coding it with another languages. Its syntax is uh, almost the same. Um, yeah. This, by the way, this example with mobile application, it was used. Uh, it was done with Java. So, yeah, guys, we need, to, we need to finish now. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, thanks very much for being here. Uh, I hope it was, it was good. I just leave you a review. And um, yeah, I will probably, we, we, we can organize another workshop about computer vision. And I, I, I will show you a more interesting topic, for example, how to, how to detect the face, how to manipulate with eyes, etc. I think it's it's probably not related to uh, to functional testing in your daily activities, but it's it's some fun. So like engineering should be some fun also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. Have a good weekend. So take care of yourself in this time, and bye bye.